Hi, Stacy here with Bluebird Paper and Thread. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is Saturday, November 18th, uh, Saturday before Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm coming to you today. I actually got into my craft room before lunch today. Um, I'm very excited because today is uh, game day and I watch one college football game from beginning to end and that is the crosstown rivalry between USC and UCLA. Um, really big SC fan and so um, I will be rooting for that that team but I do enjoy watching this game. It's um, it's fun to watch. They play really good ball hard and and um, some really good plays are made for this game because the, each school wants that that trophy. They have a trophy that goes back and forth. Um, currently SC has it so they're hoping to be able to keep it. Um, so anyways, I do like to watch that game and I thought actually I missed it. It usually, I thought it usually comes in like earlier in November or late, late October. So I'm glad that I was paying attention and I perked up and listened and <laughs> I'll be able to watch it. <laughs> uh, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My channel is on my hobbies, which are cross stitching, sewing, eventually, hopefully a little bit of quilting. I do like to do paper crafts. I like to, um, I like to do greeting cards and treat boxes, gift tags, things like that. I also enjoy scrapbooking, although I'm a little behind, but that's okay. <laughs> Lots of people that scrapbook are behind. Uh, it's easy to do. This week was, um, went by pretty quickly. I worked on um, f a little bit on the felt ornament and got very frustrated because I was not able to concentrate. So I actually think I have to redo the body. Um, so I'm, I'm going to look into that this afternoon and see what I can do with that. Um, I did a little bit of stitching and a new start. Um, a couple things for haul, not, not a lot. Um, so it was kind of quiet. The dog is doing great. Excuse me. He's doing great. Um, we're getting better with some things and new things are popping up. So the, the gal that had, that rescued him and his two sisters, she said, oh, he jumps. Well, I did not experience that and he would listen when I'm like, no off and he would, he would be fine. And now he's really comfortable and the boy jumps. <laughs> so we'll be working with him on that. Um, he's sleeping better through the night. We've been walking him. I've been going slow because I don't want his paws to bleed again. So we've been just walking several times, two, three times a day versus just once a day once in the morning, once in the evening. If my son will do it in the afternoon when he gets home, that's great. It's just an extra walk. And he's much calmer and sleeping better through the night. Still have to get up, but I'm getting up because the family gets up. Like people are getting up in my house at like 4.30 and that's when he starts in. So um, that makes sense to me. If we're all getting up early, early, then he thinks he needs to be up too. So I've been getting up to take him out to go to the bathroom that early in the morning. And, and then like today he settled back down for a little bit and it was fine. I was able to get about another hour and a half of sleep in. So that was good. Um, we introduced face to face with the kitten, um, up close and personal. Um, uh, and that went well. I'm, not ready to let her loose with him loose as well because she's three and a half pounds and he's 75. So that's not going to happen for a while, but at least she's getting braver. I have him crated when she has run of the house. And so she's approaching him a, a little bit closer, not super close, but closer to check it out. And he's getting better at controlling his, um, his excitement. So that's good, but we're going to have to work on that this week. I am off this week and I, um, I took it off before I knew that we were going to have a puppy. And I think this week I'm going to be spending quite a bit of time training the dog, trying to work on different 
different things like the jumping and the getting excited when he's in the crate, uh, things like that. So I'm kind of excited about, about doing that. Um, he's still great on a leash. He's, um, he's still grabbing flip-flops and shoes, but we catch it earlier. Uh, he's playing better with toys. We need to get him some new toys cause he's completely shredded a couple of them already. Um, but you know, it's, things are getting better. It's, you know, two steps forward, one step backward thing with puppies. And, um, once he's an adult and he's trained, he is, he's going to be the best dog. So we just have to get him there. Um, I will be looking into training classes for him though. I think, uh, just for socialization, um, and to have somebody walk me through the sleeping through the night, the, you know, that, that just the, the jumping when it's by myself, how can I have somebody pull him back when he jumps? I can't. So, um, just things like that. Um, other than that, everybody's doing great. The animals are doing great. Uh, the old lady kitty, she's not super happy right now. Um, but I can't tell if, you know, she's got some health issues, so I can't tell if it's her health issues or if she's just had it with the puppy and it might be a little bit of both. So we're keeping a good eye on her, making sure that she's still knows that she's part of the family and that, you know, we love her and, you know, but it, it might be getting close to the end for her. She's, I think she's going to be 17 in December. We, I got her in February and she was about eight weeks old, nine weeks old. So she's a late November, early December, um, baby. So we'll 17, I've never had anything, any animal live longer than 15 years. So she wins <laughs> anyways. Um, I have a giveaway today, so I want to make sure that we, we do that. Um, whips a new start let's just get started with the new start and which is also part of the haul so stitching with the housewives stitching seasons came in the winter uh, the winter one and i just this bag is so cute i just love it and this is a full kit and in the kit comes the called for floss Classic Color Works. The Called For Fabric, which is a uh, 28 count even weave thin white pine board by Fabric Flare. Of course, the chart. This is what it looks like when it, or what it will look like when it's done. It's super cute. You get a, um, a little brochure that tells you everything that you that you get and then on the back it shows you a finishing idea and in the blue box down here it gives you all of the items that you need to finish it in this way and then you also get a piece of Chelsea's checks fabric for the finishing so they kind of the only thing that they don't provide for you is the actual finishing back piece and if you want to add anything else to it um, I purchased my finishing pieces through Chantel's 141 design company um, she's a really nice set of four boards and at the top the center of the board there's a cutout that matches so spring is a is a a five petal flower summer it's like a sunflower or a sun um autumn was an uh, autumn leaf and for fall it's a mitten so those are buttons you can use them with your finish without your finish however you want to work it and um and so that's how i am finishing my pieces i started this piece twice <laughs> because I started in the middle, which starts with the snow line on the roof of that center house. And I 
I counted a gazillion times and we all know counting is hard and I stitched one too many in the row to the top two rows of this of this house here and I thought I'll just I'll just rip it out it's fine I'll rip it out and then I noticed as I was ripping out one of my stitches was op opposite and I thought oh no I cannot leave that so I wound up taking the whole thing out and restitching it and I I'm not completely satisfied with it, but I'm happier with it. And it's the right number of stitches across and all of the things. But anyways, this is my start. So I got almost the white of the roof, the snow on that middle roof, almost completely done. Sorry. And we're not going to look too closely at my stitches because they are not laying very well. But for what this piece is, it's fine. I will put time into this probably as we get closer to Christmas and I stop my Christmas stitching just because I want, there's a lot of Christmas stitching I want to do. And I don't think a lot of that stitching is going to get done. And this can wait. So as anxious as I am to start this and finish it so I can have a full, complete season set, I am I probably won't finish this until January. Next, I worked on Polar Plunge, Wally the Walrus. This is a six chart series by Hands On Design. The last chart, all of the proceeds, um, it's a PDF that you order through Kathy, Kathy Haberman Hands On Design website. It's a PDF and all of the proceeds for that go to the Special Olymp Olympics in um, Iowa, I believe. The called for fabric on this is Polar Plunge. I by Stephanie's by fabric. I changed mine to frozen fractals um, by uh, fabrics by Stephanie and it's a 32 count linen. And the reason I did this is because I'm going to be finishing it like this, but my paper on the back is more of an aqua color with gold snowflakes. And then I did go ahead and pick up some rickrack and I picked up and I got this just from Joann's. I got iridescent rickrack in medium to go behind the stitched piece. And then I did pick up the called for flosses for, so this will work for all of them, all six designs. And this is how far I got. <clears throat> so I was able to add the water or the ice, the blue edge of the ice below the walrus. Uh, I added these on either end, the larger cross stitches across the bottom. And then I trimmed out the snowflakes, or not the snowflakes, the trees with the white. Um, on the bottom and on the side of the walrus. And then I added the two trees up here. Um, the darker one was already done. I just added the other two. And all I have left to do is a wreath and three more trees and then red here, a couple of stars and um, the finishing details in those trees and the wreath and this one will be done. So this is very close to a finish. If I can get it done this week, I will. Otherwise, it'll probably be next week. Oh, he needs whiskers. This fabric is so pretty. That's a really good representation of the color. Um, lots of purpley blues and, and greens. It's just really... very pretty. 
very soft, really nice to work with. Um, I'm enjoying this one a lot. Probably won't be done. I was hoping to have it done by Christmas. That was my intention. Probably won't happen. Next, I am working on the 2022 winter issue from Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher, and I'm working on Merry and Bright by Luminous Fiber Arts. I am stitching this on 32 count even weave in parchment by Fabric Flare. Let me show you the pattern. And I'm using the called for um, DMCs. So before I had the border done here, here, and a little bit here. Um, the bottom part of the candlestick, and that was it. So I was able to finish the candlestick. I did the bottom part of the candle, part of the bird, and the screenery here, and the red. Oh, and the word bright. Oh, and I started a little bit of the gray, too. So he's turning out. I'm really enjoying him. It was a slow go. I, I didn't I didn't know if I was gonna be able to finish him or not. I think I can actually get him finished this Christmas um, or by Christmas. I think he'd make a really cute pillow. Um, he's stitching up much quicker now, and I think it's because it's the season for it. I have a really hard time working on Halloween stuff in the spring, Christmas stuff in the summer. I just, August, mid-August is about when I switch and start getting antsy and want to start stitching fall. And fall is um, uh, Halloween, Thanksgiving, fall, just general fall themed pieces. And then about middle September... I might start wanting to stitch a Christmas, but really it isn't until October that I really want to start working on Christmas stuff. So next I moved the <clears throat> monthly weigh in by stitching with the housewives. I moved this, this one along quite a bit, December. I went ahead and picked up the finishing piece from Paisley's and Polka Dots. So this is the finishing piece. I, I did mine in navy. I just wanted to be a little different than everybody else, and I really like the, the neutral of the navy. I just have to varnish it. And I have to glue this top down. This is a little, a little wonky, a little loose. Um... And then I bought the toppers to go on top of it. So, oops, you can see that. <laughs> so next to December, we have the tree. Well, I got the tree almost all the way done. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do with the tree is the star is going to be um, gold glitter. And then I want to put chunky iridescent glitter for snow on the branches. But if you look at the photo, the, the snow is at the top of each of the boughs. And I'm struggling with that a little bit because that technically is tucked up under the, the bough above it. So I'm a little... I'm not sure that's where I want the snow. I think I want the snow, you know, maybe to be at the top up here and kind of come down a little bit, but then ultimately I want it along the bottom and kind of coming up a little bit. So I'm still thinking about it. I do want to get this piece finished. Once I get the glitter on it, I think I can spray varnish it. 
and I think that'll kind of seal the glitter on it as well as finish off the piece. I don't think I want to varnish it first and then put the glitter on. I think that might not be the smartest thing. But then it'll be done and then it goes into the stand and it'll just stand on top. It'll be really cute. The January weigh-in I think is being mailed. I think I saw that charge come through on my credit card. Um, and the topper for that is a snowman. So last time I checked Paisley's and Polka Dots website, they did they only had the snowman. But for this this one, they had four of them grouped together. So it was a pumpkin, a jack o' lantern, an acorn, and the Christmas tree. So I'm thinking a snowman, something heart, something valent, or um, something. Uh, St. Patrick's Day and something or spring and something Easter or spring, but I haven't seen that yet. But anyways, this is where I got. The reindeer is done with the exception of his eyes. The tree is done with the exception of the black tops on each of the ornaments. And then I started working in on the snowflakes above. So with me, I hate wasting fabric. I really, really do. I have always struggled with three or four inch margins around a piece. So this one I measured and I did the calculations three or four or five times and I decided I could trim, pre-cut my fabrics and I would take an inch off all the way around. Worked perfectly for, um, September. Yes, worked perfectly for September. And I'm a little off on this one. Middle for this chart is right here. And I started in the middle over a little bit. So I was really worried about either side not being having enough fabric. And honestly, up here, I don't think I'm going to have it's going to be very, very tight to get that final border in not the border, but the reindeer and the garland and the wreath. And I didn't realize that until I started doing the snowflakes. I'm going to recount the snowflake too, to make sure that I have the proper number of spaces in between here. And then what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to drop that whole top row, this whole piece here, the reindeer, the greenery, the wreath down a, a stitch or two. Just because I am so tight up here, it makes me nervous to finish it with the amount of space that's left. Um, lesson learned. So I will be doing a much more conscientious job of figuring out where I'm going to start my piece and counting inches over to make sure that I get, I have enough room all the way around because honestly the size that I cut this fabric should work just fine. If, especially if you're an experienced, uh, finisher, um, it, it should work just fine. But this, this chart, it just started a little high and I don't, it just did. I don't, I obviously I made an error somewhere, but stay tuned. We'll see how it all works out. <laughs> I think I will get this done probably in the next week or two. I forgot the dog was here. <laughs> he moved and he startled me. <laughs> um, I don't remember if I told you it's called for flosses. The flosses come with the chart from fat quarter shop. The fabric is uh, 20, eight count tea dyed Monaco. And then last but not least, um, I put in a tiny bit of time on autumn days ornaments. I thought I had about 20 minutes to stitch. Um, and I thought, what can I do? That's quick. And I pulled this out because it's a 20, 
25 count even weave um, in parchment and I thought that will that will stitch really quickly oh sorry that'll stitch really quickly <clears throat> So what I worked on was I almost got the pine cone done. And I was able to add a little bit of the crust or the or the pie edging to the pie. I really would like to get these done this week, but this would be a pretty monogamous stitch if I did that, and I don't, I don't want to be a be a monogamous stitcher um, at this point, uh, just because the holidays are here, and I'm, I, there's so many other things I'd like to start stitching or or work on, um, and then I'm using the called for flosses. This color is so pretty. It is Kentucky bluegrass. So that's it for my stitching. I um, I also worked on my felt ornament. I don't, so that took some time. Um, haul. This year's Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher came in and such cute projects in here. Really cute cross stitching, really, really cute punch needle. I've been wanting to pick that up again um, and I might have to. This little guy is super cute. He actually has a uh, Krynik in the red, so he's sparkly. Like there's. There's this one and look, her tree is like it. We find it in nature, not perfectly straight. This one, oh, I really want to stitch him. In fact, I love him so much. If he works up quickly enough and it's easy enough to finish like this, I could see doing him for like one or two at a craft show. It would be expensive to sell him. I don't know that anybody would want to buy him, but he's really cute. I've been really wanting to stitch one of um, Jan Hicks pieces. So I'm really liking this one. I'm glad that was in there. Maybe I'll get that one a go. Stitching with the housewives, winter, and the snowmen are the snowmen almost look like ducks. They're darling, but they're holding chickens. And then Vonna Pfeiffer did, did her finishing tutorial on how to finish ornaments. A gusseted ornament. Here's a bigger picture of the snowman with the sparkly red. And then this one, I've been wanting to stitch one of her pieces and look, here it is. So cute. Is it cro crochet a go go? Crochet a go go? Really cute. This punch needle is cute too. Teresa Kogut has a piece. I love that the snowman is holding an American flag. And then have yourself a Merry Little Christmas. 
really cute. So I'm glad that this one came. Um, I don't think I'll get anything stitched out of it this year. Well, for Christmas, maybe, maybe for winter. We'll see. I have it. I'll have it for years. I can work on it whenever I feel like I can work it in. Um, I, I went ahead and I did a couple orders yesterday. I did not have all of the floss to kit up the three things that I picked up. One which was Snow Magical and the other one was, um, they're all rounds. The other one was definitely a Brenda Gervais piece and, and there was one more I can't think of off the top of my, oh, I know, uh, We Santa 2023, I had everything I needed for that except the right fabric, but I found a really nice substitute and I'm kind of excited, so I'll probably start that this week. Um, but anyway, so I, I placed an order for that. I ordered a couple pieces of fabric and then the floss and a Halloween chart, um, bony bones or something. I don't, it, really cute one. Um, and then I placed another order. I, I was watching last night the um, Sweetwater Stitcher Jessica and she mentioned that Brenda Gervais has a new kit out on her website. I did not realize that she had her own website, which I find ridiculous. Like, how could I not know that? I feel like I've ordered from her before. Um, I guess she doesn't do newsletters. I don't, I don't know. But it's a really cute gingerbread house. I think it's entitled Sugar and Spice. I just ordered it. You think I would know. And it, you can order the chart the fabric and something else for $40. So I went ahead, I ordered that and then I ordered two other charts. I think another holiday hoopla for winter. It's the snowman one, I think. And then another, another pattern that it's escaping me now. So um, so I bought those, the, from those two places and then that's, that's it. I do have to buy a couple things for finishing. Um, the points on the back of one of my frames that I use to switch out, um, one of my monthly pieces, the points are breaking off cause they're being, you know, wiggled back and forth all the time. So I need to buy a point setter. They're about $50 through Amazon. So I'm, I'll probably do that before, um, the end of the month. And then, um, I think that that's about it for stitching. I may have to go back online. Um, I could have sworn I had skeins and skeins and skeins of grits and I don't. And grits is used in, I think, all three of those patterns, or two of the three patterns that I kitted um, last night. So um, I need to find some grits. Um, anyways, that's that's what I've done. So you'll there'll be another haul coming in. And then I really, I really do want to focus on not not buying new charts, but I'm going to the Jingle Ball. They have Jingle Ball exclusive charts. And then of course, Nashville Needlework Market comes out in I think March and they always have fun things, but I'm going to do that one a little different. I'm going to wait until maybe a week, week and a half before it launches. I'm going to I'm going to see as many of the new charts as I can because last time I ordered one order for a hundred dollars and I didn't realize what I was doing and that there were a lot more patterns being released after that. And so I wound up doing like two or three orders. And of course you're to justify shipping. You're not just going to buy one thing. So, um, 
I spent a little bit more than what I wanted to and I'm very happy with my purchases, but I mean, I when do I have time to stitch all this? So I thought if I wait a little bit longer, I can still get in on the pre-orders and, but then I can make a better decision on what I want now and what can wait and go on the wish list. So, um, I am going to try to curtail my spending a little bit this year, um, and stitch from stash only, only buy what I absolutely need and see how that see how that goes. I don't know. We'll see. I say that and it, you know, I've been saying that for months and it hasn't been going very well. Snow magical. Uh, Nicole Spore is going to be doing a stitch along, I believe starting on the 28th of November. And I have an extra pattern. So this is going to be, um, this week's giveaway. Um, if you want to join in on the, on the stitch along, that's fine. Um, if you just want to stitch it on your own, that's fine. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to keep up with the, um, with the finishing. I mean, not the finishing, the stitching on it, but I wanted all of the things. So I, I, I bought mine, I bought the pattern because I didn't want it to sell out. And then I went online and I bought the finishing kit from Chantel 141 design company and it came with the pattern. So I have an extra one and I thought I would pass it along. So let's, and since it's only one, let's do a question. And why don't you tell me in the comments below, um, do you stitch your holiday stitching Christmas, any other holidays that you do, or do you go straight into, do you stitch holiday and winter at the same time? Because some of that stuff can overlap. What, what do you, what do you do typically around this year, this time of year? Are you stitching for gifts? Are you stitching for yourself for decor, um, for craft shows? You know, what, what is your, method this time of year with your stitching. Um, I will draw a name at next week's video and I will get this out in the mail. Um, this week coming up, I should have a lot more stitching time. I'm actually taking the week off. Um, I had scheduled it a while ago before I got puppy. I will be training him, but I also am excited. I've got some, um, I have a party, a, a Christmas party that I'm going to, um, the beginning of well, the second Thursday of um, December and I have not made handmade cards last year I completely forgot about cards and so nobody got any cards for me um, but this year I thought I would like to do the same type of card um, but they're not all gonna be the same. I have to do I think 10 I'm not sure how many I have to do I have to do quite a bit so I would like to get that done this week while I'm off. And then I'd like to, I haven't done treat boxes for the people at work for a very long time. So I would like to do treat boxes. And then depending on the size of the treat box, we'll determine and which treat box I choose. I have an idea of what I want to do. We'll have to see how it all works out. Um, I will either do um, cookies or candy in the treat box, or maybe a little bit of both in the treat box. Um, I got a new stand mixer, um, this year and, or just this week. And I've never had a stand mixer. I've been wanting one for a really, really, really long time. Storage is an issue. So that's why I haven't purchased one. And my daughter started sending me these cookie recipes. And I said, well, then are we baking? <laughs> She's like, yes. And I said, okay, then I'll order a stand mixer. So I got a Hamilton beach. I didn't, I really, my dream mixer is like $500 on sale. I don't bake that much anymore. I did not want to spend that kind of money. I did not. I would love to have a KitchenAid. I just couldn't justify it. So I found through Kohl's a Hamilton Beach mixer with the added discount. And I, I might have had Kohl's cash. I don't know. I got it for, it was on sale. I got it for like 90 bucks shipped. So I was a pretty happy camper. Um, so it's sitting on the counter, it's just waiting to be used. And I thought today I was going to make cookies, but we didn't get to the store to get ingredients. So it'll 
probably be this next week too. I'm going to do so much this next week. <laughs> I probably won't get very much done at all. Um, but anyways, so, um, so yeah, so that's what I want to kind of judge my treat boxes to see, am I going to make cookies for people at work or am I just going to fill it with candy? I guess time, you know, what kind of time I have will also dictate, um, what I, what I do for them, but I would like to do something cause it's been a couple years. Anyways that's it for me. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please, um, hit that subscribe button. Um, the notification bell, please like the video, share the video, comment on the video. Um, I love to hear from all of you. I do appreciate it. And uh, we're very close to a thousand. I am thinking of things that I'd like to do for a giveaway for that, um, for that video. And I would love to try to get to that thousand before the end of the year. My floss versary, floss two versary, I don't know, whatever it is. It's come a year at the end, at like I think December 31st or January 1st. It's been a, it'll be a year. So um, it would be fun to be able to celebrate both at the same time. So anyways, I hope you have a great week. Have a very happy Thanksgiving. Um, I hope that you um, get to eat all the goodies that you want to and that you have a very safe and enjoyable holiday um, and that you get a lot of stitching done. I do not do Black Friday shopping, so I will be sitting at home putting up my Christmas decorations. <laughs> um, anyways, have a great week and until next time, happy stitching. Bye.